Welcome to the Nick Blevins Family Ministry Podcast. Our goal is to help you maximize your church's potential. You'll hear from top leaders in children's, student, and family ministry about the principles and practices they use. Now here's your host, Nick Blevins. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 102 of the podcast. It's a special podcast. In fact, I recorded this along with four other friends and it's all a recap of our experience at the Orange Conference this year. So we talked through what were some of our favorite moments, ideas, practical you know, things we walked away with to apply to our ministry, uh, key conversations we had. So some of it, if you went to Orange, you'll, you'll, you'll get that. But even if you didn't go to Orange, there'll be some ideas in there that hopefully you can take and you can apply as well. So we recorded this, all of us kind of bounced around and shared our different thoughts and, you know, a bunch of different guys that all actually host a podcast. So this is going to show up on their podcast as well this week and uh, most of them blog. So we've got Tom Pounder, who's been on this podcast, Tom Bump, who's also been on this podcast, Steve Cullum, who hosts the student ministry podcast and David Madrin. And so all of us talk together about our Orange Conference experience. So I think this will be fun to, to listen to, certainly if you went, but even if you didn't, I really think there are some ideas in there that you might walk away with. Maybe you'll take the the idea, one of the ideas that I shared that stuck with me that I want to kind of implement at our church, and maybe that'll be something you work towards as well. As usual, I, I appreciate you sharing the podcast and rating on iTunes, giving it a review, and in the show notes at nickblevins.com slash episode 102, we'll list... You know, all the other guests that I talked about in here, links to their podcasts and their blogs. And uh, we even talked about a resource in there that we might be able to get and share with you as well. So you can get all that at nickblevins.com slash episode 102. But without further ado, let's jump into my conversation with these guys about the Orange Conference this year. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. We got five guys in the room uh, digitally. And uh, we're going to be talking all about the Orange Conference. Uh, my name is Steve Cullum. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with my podcast, the Student Ministry Podcast, I interview student ministry people about student ministry world. And um, I've been in youth ministry for about 15 years and love doing it, working with middle school and high school students. And this has been, I think, maybe the sixth or seventh, something like that, uh, Orange Conference I've been to. So um, really looking forward to talking to you guys. Uh, Bump, you want to tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, my name is Tom Bump, and I'm the host of the Kid Ministry Collective podcast. Um, and so we do all things kind of kids and family uh, leadership stuff. And uh, um, I hail from uh, just south of Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, it's been my, uh, I think, man, I think my sixth or seventh Orange Conference that I've been at. So I'm um, looking forward to hanging around, as, as I say on the Kid Ministry Collective, the, the, the uh, virtual round table. And I'm David Madrin, host of the World of Kid Men podcast. And Orange Conference 2018 was number five for me, uh, but number one on the Orange Blogger team, which was really, really cool. Um, so, and I, I do podcasts about uh, children's ministry, obviously, and family ministry stuff, and just looking at ways to uh, help encourage our elementary aged kids. Cool. Well, I'm Nick Levins. I host the Family Ministry Podcast. And Dave, when you said you, this was your number one for the blogging, I thought you meant like you were the number one blogger, which I thought, <laughs> man, that's pretty bold. Probably true, but you know that's that's pretty bold. That's awesome. So yeah, I serve at Community Christian Church in Maryland, and next gen pastor, and on the on my podcast, try to have all kinds of different voices and fam. I call it family ministry, but basically birth through high school. In terms of which Orange Conference, I think I've only missed one, so I don't know how many there have been. Eleven or twelve. I went to the first one, which was really funny because it was in a different building. I don't know if any of you guys were there, but it was super crowded because they probably didn't realize how big it was going to be even back then. And uh, there were like breakouts in with like curtains that separated the breakouts. So like you could hear the other, it was, it was a different experience for sure. <laughs> and then uh, I think I missed the next one and then I've, I've been ever since. So, yep, it's been a lot of fun. This year was no different. It was, it was excellent. Hey uh, everyone, I'm Tom Pounder and I uh, blog and podcast at ymsidekick.com. And I kind of talk about student ministry, family ministry and digital kind of stuff. I, I'm an online campus pastor as well as a student minister, uh, and I've been at Orange ever since 2011, although I did miss one year somewhere in between there. I, I don't remember which year it was, but uh, I, 
Orange Conference is one of my favorite conferences to go to, and I look forward to it every year. Um, I think I cried a lot that year I didn't go. <laughs> so, uh, but I was nice. glad to, to be there with everyone this year and uh, talk about it with you guys today. So I'm really excited about this. We cried too, just so you know. <laughs> I was going to say, we always miss you, Tom. That's right. Oh, thanks. You guys are the best. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, let's talk about some highlights um, from the, the conference this year. Um, we can just kind of go in order. Um, maybe we'll start with you, Bump, if uh, you just want to talk, maybe one highlight that was really kind of stood out to you from the conference this year. The, vo- the, the theme was this one voice idea, um, and but uh, they kind of took it in different ways. Maybe there was something that stood out to you. We'll just kind of go around the horn and, and talk about that. Yeah. Um, boy, there was a lot, there was a lot of great stuff. Um, I think I'm actually going to go in reverse. I think f- one of the best worship experiences and probably one of the best finishes I've seen at orange, uh, was Louis Giglio. Um, and I had heard his talk, um, at another conference, but he did it differently for orange. Um, and the focus on the name of Jesus was just insanely powerful. Um, I, in fact, I stopped taking notes and just lost myself in it. So, uh, for me personally, that was, that was a very powerful, powerful, um, time. Um, I think, um, there were, there were two quotes that, that have stuck with me. Um, one was Andy Stanley about unity is mission critical and disunity, uh, disrupts the mission. Um, I thought that was spot on that. Uh, as the body of Christ, we've got to find ways to unify and and get back on mission um, for that. So I think I think that was that was really good. Uh, the other one was Ryan Leak. Um, man, the dude was spot on again, dropping truth bomb after truth bomb. And his one quote: "Are we vulnerable and authentic enough to reveal our kryptonite along with our cape?" Because um, we often, as leaders, try to be heroes. Um, but yet, um, we need that authentic community and, and be vulnerable enough to say, Hey, this is, this is, this is what's hamstringing me. This is my kryptonite. Um, and can I share that with you? And, and can I be safe in sharing that? Cause we say we want to create that for students and children. Uh, but yet as leaders, we don't create that for ourselves. And I think those were two very powerful talks. Um, you know, well, three. Um, it was a way to wrap it up. Um, but then those two, um, were just, uh, amazing. So yeah, Nick, what about you or David? What about you? Yeah, I, I would, uh, I would say session six, uh, right there at the end of course, Ryan leak. I mean, that man just brings it every time he's on the stage. Um, you know, last year it really, I uh, kind of jolted some things that I do in ministry now, uh, just based off of how he was interacting with people that he saw on a daily basis. Uh, and then to, to, to bring the conversation more into ministry leaders and how we are, um, you know, we're quick to, to help and want to help fix others and encourage people to that, but we really neglect ourselves. But session six, uh, right there at the end, when Reggie and uh, just that that community of of, uh, of black leaders uh, was just it was overwhelming. It, it was just that good. I thought Dr. Bernice King last year was you know, I, I didn't think anything could top that. I mean, because it's Dr. Bernice King, you know. But this year just seemed it it just seemed to be more impactful. And I love that, that Reggie is, is help leading uh, this movement on, on behalf of uh, white evangelicals really to, to help unify communities and help unify the church as a whole by, you know, just, just leaning in and wanting to be a part of the conversation and creating conversations. What about you, Nick? I would say that that moment was definitely a highlight. I think it's one of my favorite moments the last couple of years. And um, I think what makes it even more powerful is that I've, I've seen enough to know how real it is for like Reggie, you know? Uh, so it's not just something to talk about on stage. And, and obviously he got teared up this time. It was emotional and all that. 
but uh, after orange tour last year, when we were at the stop near us, um, uh, it was kind of late, late after the tour had ended and, and Reggie was out in the lobby and I got to talking with him with a friend from our church. And I was saying how even at tour, there was that same kind of ex- you know, moment there was different how they did it, but I thought they did it a great job with that. And I was saying that I thought he did a great job with that. And his first response was, did you really think so? Like w- what else could we do? I mean, just as totally humble, like, man, he is driving the, the, he's a driving force for racial unity more than, you know, many leaders we know in the, in the church world. And yet there he is asking me, what do I know? You know, like it, what I thought and how it could be better. And was it enough? I and mean, like, what else could we do? Like the whole thing. I just love that he lives that out. A different moment for me, Orange Conference, my favorite is always the people, uh, the Orange staff and you all. And just there's so many connections. It feels like there's, you know, a thousand friends and then 6,000 other people aren't your friends yet. They're going to be this week, you know, or whatever. And there was a moment where he had Kenny Conley organize this for next gen pastors where, Hey, if you want to meet up and hang out and talk over lunch on Thursday at the other building. So if you had, um, uh, breakouts over there. And so like 25 to 30 of us had chairs that we stole from like an overflow and set up in the hallway. And we were just talking practical stuff. Like how do you align a next gen ministry? How do you partner with parents? You know what I mean? And I was like, this is really cool for people to sit in this circle. And of course, the uh, the volunteers uh, and or, and or staff were like, hey, can you all clean this up? Like, we got breakouts starting in 15 minutes and you're blocking the hallway. But anyway, that was a lot of fun. It's just cool to connect with new people and, and hear some ideas. Like, there were some great leaders in that circle who are doing amazing things. That We talked about marriage ministry and a couple of the churches and what they're doing. So that was a highlight for me, for sure. Yeah, um, for me, uh, it was that uh, time on Thursday night where uh, John Acuff and Reggie Joyner personally invited me over to an after party, and we got to party all night long. <laughs> oh, that sounds <laughs> I'm kidding, like I'm kidding. That in my yeah. dream that happened. On my dream Thursday oh, night that happened. That was your Thursday night dream, which was the highlight. I get <laughs> no, um, no, but personally for me, I, again, I I love how many different voices. Orange brings to share with us. I mean, I know our theme was one voice, but so many different people from different perspectives and different backgrounds getting to share with us. That is what really I look forward to because you never know who's going to come out. I mean, obviously they have a speaker list and everything, but I mean, again, the fact that we had Jen Hatmaker come and share with us uh, this year. Uh, in the past, we've had other people share with us, uh, how we had Louie share with us this year. It's just great that they bring different voices, different perspectives but all the same theme and all about, again, this year was about working together and we can do more together. And I just loved hearing every session, whether it was a breakout or was a main session, just a different voice saying the same thing from their different perspectives. I I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I I love that. I mean, that's what we're kind of doing here, coming together on one voice. And I loved, I always love hearing from people that I've never heard of at an orange conference. I, I feel like last year it probably was Ryan leak. I, I hadn't heard about him until then. And I was blown away. Like you guys have said, just like, wow, this guy's some amazing wisdom and, and great content. And uh, I was looking forward to hearing him this year. And so I think that's, we get both, you know, the well-known people that we know are really good, but then we get to hear new voices that are, you know, it's just speaking some amazing wisdom into, into this thing as well. And all coming around and, and seeing different people, um, you know, old friends and making new friends is always a great thing. Um, but I think probably the biggest highlight for me, um, I'll go back to what you said, bump. I think the, the focus around Jesus was just so awesome. I think we started off well with when Andy Stanley spoke, I think the Tuesday or Wednesday morning, um, that was a really cool moment. And then it ended on an even more powerful moment just around the name of Jesus. And like, I think that's, that's probably one of the biggest things that always, um, that, that stuck out to me throughout the whole thing. If we can could just come around the name of Christ and and proclaim Him above every other name, um, all those other those disagreements and arguments and everything should fall to the wayside um, when we just elevate the name of Christ. And I think that was a really really cool um, focus for us to just bring it back to to Him above everything else. So did you, uh, maybe I'm hoping that you guys had, um, at least one idea. I'm sure you probably had like 20 different ideas, like things that, that really stood out to you that you wanted to walk away with. Um, bump was there like kind of what, maybe one idea that rose to the top that you're like, yeah, this is my, my big takeaway from this year. 
Ooh, wow. Um, you know, I, as I was thinking about that question, um, I was like, wow, how am I going to find one? So I'm going to cheat because I got to I, I got to say that there's t- there was two things that I looked at. One was that really struck me as far as um, we talk about together, we can do more. And one of the burdens I have um, for is for families in our church. And really, you know, we talk a lot about partnering with parents, but most of us will admit we're not doing a good job of it. And I, I notice, I notice a lot of cynicism towards parents, you know, that while well, they don't care, they're too busy, they don't want to make time. And and I think that that's carrying over and that's, that's limiting what we can do. And, and I just realized that, you know, it's got to start with me and my attitude. Um, and when I was in John Acuff's breakout about kids and technology, I mean, it, he brought some stuff that I was like, you know, I'd heard some of this around in different blogs and stuff, but it really rattled my cage to think, wow, we have really got to help parents be prepared for some of this stuff because they're, they're so vulnerable right now and they don't know. Um, And so I think we have a great responsibility to come together with a voice that's loud and clear to say, parents, we truly are for you and we want to help you. And so we're going to do some talking and we're going to do a lot of listening because that's one of the things I heard from the main stage, just like with racial reconciliation, we need to listen more. Um, we need to listen and re- then we need to respond. Um, and, and so with kids, you know, realizing that we're, you know, Johnny Kiff said, we're straddling that next generation of, that's really the last generation to remember what it's like to not have the internet. I mean, I was like, wow, this is, you know, <laughs> that's crazy to think that the generation that's come, that's birthed now uh, they, they're not going to have a clue that the internet never existed. And so how do we help parents? How do we engage them to help them help their kids? Um, and so I felt like, you know, a takeaway for me was to, to say, okay, I need to get a strategic plan. I need to start asking questions of parents and how I can, can better uh, listen to them. And if I could share one more, I, I, it was, it was, again, it's something that I've known, but it just hit me hard as far as, I haven't been doing a very good job of it. And that was with Jeff Surratt about leading your team to go farther, faster. And uh, just talking about how the whole idea that, that, you know, leadership um, development is kind of like one of those all skate moments, you know, the old skating rinks and and all skate, you know, and and that's kind of what we approach leadership development at, but it's really not effective development. And it really does take the model that Jesus took of finding that 12 uh, and then finding that three and really, truly investing in them. And so I came away with a, that desire to, to really get a good, solid plan down on paper that I'm going to work um, and work hard at developing my 12, developing my three so that I've got a good, strong leadership team um, and that we really are communicating that we're about equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. So, David, how about you? What what was your uh one, maybe two takeaways. I am a huge Jeff Henderson fan and have been for a number of years now. And I love what they are doing at Gwinnett church. Uh, so I sat in on his breakout um, on Thursday, you know, talking about just being for your community and they have really modeled that, that whole four, um, um, initiative so well. I mean, to the point to where as a multi-site church, Gwinnett Church now has a multi-site campus of their own. Uh, so that just, that speaks so well of what, uh, what they're doing right at Gwinnett Church. And they are, uh, you know, they're just, they're making people feel like they belong before they believe. You know, and Jeff has said that numerous times. Uh, and so for me, uh, in the role as our church's outreach guy and local missions guy, uh, it's really just trying to dive in a little bit more to what, uh, what practices perhaps Gwinnett Church is doing that could translate over to what any church could do, uh, to just help the health of the church. Uh, and to get out in the community more and, and to, to bring some presence and awareness, uh, 
to to our churches. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, the the notes I took, you know, just all go back to, you know, what can I do as our church's outreach guy to bring more focus, to bring more folks uh, into the fold, meet them where they're at, you know, build some relationships with them, uh, and and give them opportunity to feel like they belong uh, before they believe. What do you think, Nick? I would say I, there's definitely a bunch of ideas. I try to like when I keep uh, notes and main sessions or breakouts, I try to write action items separately too sometimes. So there's like ideas, but then there's like, no, I definitely got to go do that one. Uh, one I thought about was in that conversation I mentioned with next gen leaders in the middle of lunch there. Um, a couple of the churches are really utilizing married people strategy from orange, which is certainly, I think one of the lesser known, lesser used pieces of the orange strategy. And uh, up until now, I would say probably it's been fine that we haven't leaned in there because I'm just a big believer that when you partner with parents, you kind of, you got to start with the most important things and then you add things on as you can. And for different size churches, I think it looks different too. Like I don't think a church of one size needs to do everything. And you know what I mean? I think it's just different, but I feel like we're at the point where we could lean in there. And what I liked about it is, you know, married people using what they give you, you could either implement a version that is, going to take a good bit of your time. Like you could do live events, right? And you bring married couples in and, and, and do the live event and, you know, prepare that whole thing. And, and, and that would be great. But then there's also the version where you're just equipping them with some of the content and ideas. And it's kind of like, go do it on your own. And, and you'll probably get different levels of effectiveness. But that's one thing I walked away with was we could certainly start doing more there. And we could even start on the low end where it doesn't take as much time from us and then just see what we hear. And if there's some momentum behind it, then start throwing some time and resources at it. So that was one practical thing I walked away with. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, Nick. Uh, for me, I went into orange really, um, looking to learn more and grow in the whole realm of volunteer leadership. Uh, volunteer leadership is always something that's a passion of mine, but I also, the reality was this past year I've been in and out of student ministry, uh, for different reasons with, uh, with our church. And, and I went into Orange saying, okay, I got to get back in this fold of really learning how to recruit, recruit, train, and develop volunteer leaders. So I picked some different tracks out there about volunteer leadership. And, and one of the ones that I went to was just discovering what volunteers really want with the middle school perspective from Ashley Bohins. And she gave just four really cool things that I, I weren't necessarily new information, but it was a great reminder and it affirmed a lot of things that I was thinking in my head. And I realized, okay, I'm not crazy to think this way. This is what really I'm seeing. And, um, and she's just really confirmed it. And the four ones are real quick, simple. They want to follow a great leader. They want to serve in a place that fits. They want meaningful training and they want authentic community. And I'm all about community. I'm all about growing with our leaders and providing that authentic community. But, and, and the, the, the serve in a place that fits, it's not one. I always go in the mindset, at least when I was early on in student ministry, that here's, here's the job description of what a volunteer lo- leader looks like. You got to fit this mold or you can't serve, basically. Well, over the years, I've discovered that doesn't work. And then for her to say they want to p- serve in a place that fits, everyone can serve in something different. And I think that was really enlightening and just confirming to me of, hey, this is, this is the right direction to take. So I was really encouraged by her uh, session. That's cool. Yeah. So one of the things, um, Tommy, and like you mentioned, you know, you, you purposely signed up for, for workshops that kind of take you in a direction that you thought you would really needed to grow. Um, I felt like I kind of did that, but I think the Holy spirit was guiding me and, and picking, picking things before me. Um, because I didn't realize the theme that I had chosen for myself until I actually got there and started seeing just everything start layering on top of each other. Um, but it was a really cool moment. So, um, for listeners of, of my podcast, they, they know that I've, I've recently started at this new church. It's a lot larger church than I was, that I've been used to. And, uh, and so it's a different experience within student ministry to work with a staff and, and you know, having to interact with a lot more staff on the, at the church and, and all these different things and, and trying to grow the ministry to the next level. And so, um, one of the big things that, that stood out to me was this was how to grow a ministry to that next level. And so, um, one of the biggest ones that stood out to me 
practically was uh, Crystal Chang's um, uh, one I'm about li- like layering leadership. And so I always had this idea, you know, that we, you know, I need to be leading the small group leaders. And eventually, you know, even Orange talks about how we ha- should have coaches in place for small group leaders. And so, you know, I lead the coaches, the coaches lead the small group leaders, small group leaders lead the students. And which made sense, everything uh, to me. But one of the things that she was saying, okay, put, add even more layers into it so you can really scale and multiply over time. And so that ministry can continue to grow and you're empowering and equipping other leaders. And uh, and all of a sudden, like, there was a chart and it just made sense to me when I saw it. Um, she provided, which is really, really cool just to, to see how the ministry can be structured. Because I always thought of it like a hierarchy sort of thing, if that's how it it should work, but really, um, <laughs> just a changing of, of how it was structured into like a circular quadrant sort of area, all of a sudden just clicked for me. I'm like, man, this is, this is how it could be structured. So having, you know, a quadrant of large group ministry and a large group, or a quadrant of small group ministry, a quadrant of parent ministry and a quadrant of what they call logistics. I'm still not sold on that name, but the idea of like kind of everything else <laughs> um, in your ministry and then just having leaders over that and leaders over those things and continue to break it down over time. And uh, I think a couple of you guys said too, like empowering those leaders to, to do what they can do in those areas and really um, equipping them. And so that all of a sudden just like made sense to me. And then I attended a couple other breakouts about how to structure teams for the like, going further and faster and, and all these different things, just like, okay, this is, this is what the next step is. And so one of the, one of the ones I went to was a a breakout with other high school leaders and uh, it was more a discussion kind of based thing. And one of the questions they ask is what's, what's something you need to stop doing. And, and all of a sudden there's the Holy spirit laid it on my heart. I was like, I know exactly what I need to stop doing. Like, and I never realized it about myself until this moment is I need to stop thinking that I have to have everything in a really good place before I hand it off to someone else. And like, as soon as I realized that about myself, it was like, that's how I can take the ministry to the next level is when I start empowering people before I figure it all out is I bring them on and then we build together. And uh, that was like one of those big, you know, realization moments. <laughs> like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't realize that about myself until this moment. Um, but yeah, I think it's just about, yeah, how do I grow the ministry or how does God grow the ministry through me um, and how to structure things and how to empower people for, for the long haul. So I'd love to see the notes from that breakout of uh, you said of crystal and, you know, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I I just made a note. I want those. (laughs) Yep. And she actually shared them, which is really cool. So I could, I could pass on that email to you guys and I'm going to see, I'm going to ask her and see if it's, if it's okay, if I kind of share it out there on our blog as well, um, because it's, it's a really cool structure. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the Yuli day, Obviously, I think all of us were there, you know, and the the whole focus on the volunteer structures and how to really, truly equip. And, and a lot of us are, are scared. I mean, I think a lot of leaders, especially in smaller churches, we get a little nervous about the whole idea of, of equipping volunteers because we're afraid that somebody's going to do it better than we are going to do it um, or they're, they're not going to do it the exact same way we're going to do it. Um, and, and I loved, um, I, I love that thought, Steve, cause that was, that was something that Jeff Surratt, I think talked about. Um, sounds like we were in similar focus breakout kind of things. Cause you know, he talked about, you know, handpicking your team. I love his line. Jesus didn't use sign up sheets, um, to recruit. That's great. <laughs> he didn't walk around Jerusalem passing out. Hey, do you want to be one of my disciples? Sign up now. Um, <laughs> he makes me laugh so hard. That oh, man. he is awesome. Like he's just hilarious. Yeah. So he, wise. But I loved his thing about making leadership development a team sport. You know, I love sports. And so that, that whole idea of identifying, de- de- developing and deploying other leaders. And that's kind of what you were saying that those surfaces, those levels. And I think, I think that's really good. Um, so, well, how did you all like the, you lead day speaking of that? Cause I thought that was great too. It was a whole new, approach where it's kind of like it's all, all about volunteers and mostly they built on each other and i know they had way more people attend you lead day this year than in the past and it makes sense too because it's like oh volunteers that's probably the number one felt me what did you all think about that or was there something that stood out from that day for you 
yeah, I think, I think it was really good as well. Um, and I think it was, it was cool to take that, that approach. Um, I, I loved seeing more people cause I, I've always thought like in the past before I started sending the, the pre-conference kind of stuff is that, you know, that there needs to be more here. Like, like, which is weird because, you know, you sometimes you feel like you're drinking from the fire hose already. Um, like, but there are some other things that they, they have maybe, <clears throat> I don't know, left out or weren't able to touch in the regular conference. And so that was really cool to see. Maybe the other guys didn't attend you late day. They were <laughs> no, I, I, I did. I was, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> want to jump in on someone who uh, did it again. I, I love the you lead day because it just provides you with a little bit of, um, a little bit more instruction and, and encouragement before you do. Again, the breakouts that happen during the orange conference is fantastic, but this just gives you an extra added source of, of knowledge. And again, they, they usually pick some really good topics to be offering. And again, I got a ton of stuff out of it and it was just great to connect. And again, because the crowds are a little bit smaller, you're able to talk with the presenter a little bit easier. And that was something I really enjoyed as well. I also like one of my favorite things about you lead day is it's not as many people. So the hallways are less crowded. It's always fun to come back on Thursday when it's like 7,500 people. And it's like, Whoa. Wow, I, was just I saying, thought it was yeah. crowded yesterday, and now it's like, you know, I can't even move. Yeah, it went from like 2,500 to, you know, almost 8,000 people um, all sh- doing the orange shuffle in those hallways. <laughs> it yeah. was like, man, you, you better be, you better love people. I'm talking about one voice. I think we were almost one body. <laughs> Especially the day that it rained because it yes. yeah. drove us all inside. So. Yeah. And you know what? There, okay. There's, there, here was a, that was a cool thing though. You know what? It showed how Orange was even ready for the details. I got to give them props. There were people out there ready by the doors with ponchos to help alleviate, you know. And so I was one of those, man, I pushed my way across. I grabbed one of those ponchos. I threw it over my head and I was running out the down the down the bridge um, alongside the building because I was not going to shuffle with those other, you know, those other 8,000 people. Um, Did you but, push somebody in the water? That's what I'm thinking. I can I, picture I, you I like, I get I mean, out of here. <laughs> I, it, well, we were all wet enough. I mean, it wouldn't have mattered. You, know, so <laughs> you, you wouldn't have noticed but, the difference. But I gotta say, I gotta give a shout out to the Rethink team for for even being prepared for a day like that because they they were ready. They had them at all the doors, um, and that was impressive. But yeah, I love Yuli Day. I think a lot of people don't take advantage of. Um, but I liked how you could go to a kidmin, a student ministry. Um, and you were in, in some ways you were getting the same content because I was watching. And I'm like, man, is somebody, you know, or one of you guys in the room because you're tweeting out the same stuff I'm tweeting. So it was the same outlines, but everybody had different communicators and a different focus. And I loved that for people that that way volunteers that were there and other leaders that were there could could really get some good content um, and to really think through some good takeaways to go home and say, okay, how can I make over my volunteer structure? Um, what do I need to think about? Um, and, and am I really executing it when I get home? So I, I loved it. That's cool. Yeah. I do like how there was a lot of breakouts this year and I think there's probably been in the past too, but I just especially noticed it this year. Um, that were based on like church size and different situations because I think all this, a lot of times, you know, being in a small church for a long time, I go to conferences and hear these grandiose ideas and that's fantastic. But how do I implement in my church of 150 people or less or whatever? And so it's cool to, to have some structure like built around like, okay, this is how it works at this scale. And this is how it works at this different scale. One of the things I wanted to touch on as far as you, you lead day went is I went to Kenny Conley's breakout on navigating uh, infant loss and infertility. Um, as that's something that I'm very familiar with now in having lost uh, an infant baby at three and a half months old back in 2014. And Orange has an absolute great resource there in the Made Known event that people just aren't running to yet. I mean, we, we, we talk, you know, just about how great Orange is about putting out resources. This is another one of those resources that's very rarely known uh, that's underutilized. Now it was just launched last year at conference. Uh, so it's still, you know, fairly new out on the market, but it was really, really awesome to have a breakout on it and, and really to see uh, Kenny p- 
put, you know, just lay it all out there as vulnerable as I've ever seen a man, uh, you know, talking about the, the trials and uh, the highs and lows of, of uh, getting pregnant and uh, then, you know, losing the baby and, you know, just all of those things. And uh, as again, as someone who's experienced those kind of things, it was really, uh, really impactful and, uh, you know, just further, energizes me to go and reach a crowd um, that hadn't felt connected by the church because that's really a taboo subject. You know, I mean, who, who just goes out talking about, Oh, well, my wife and I, we can't get pregnant or, you know, this is our third miscarriage or Hey, you know, we lost a baby at three and a half months old. Those aren't conversations you're going to hear every day. You're not going to hear them at church. You're not going to hear them in the office, you know? So Uh, I love the resource. My wife and I have led a couple of those events here in the Kansas City area already, and we're looking to do more. Uh, But again, I just commend uh, Kenny and his wife on on the vulnerability and saying, hey, we want to um, create something for families, for for mom and dads to to give some identity to the child and, and for a community of folks to just come in and love on those families. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, we're we probably need to wrap it up here. I think bumps got a pretty hard out pretty soon. Um, but I think it'd be cool to just kind of, since we're all on each other's podcasts and everything this time around, uh, maybe take a, just a moment to tell people where to find you online and, and where your podcast is. And if we want to connect with each other a little more so you can do a little self promotion here at the end. So bump, you want to start us off? Sure. Uh, again, you can uh, find uh, my Kid Ministry Collective podcast uh, on iTunes and love to have you subscribe there. Um, you can uh, find me online, Twitter, at PT Bump. Instagram is the same thing. Uh, my blog is also PT Bump uh, and uh, would love to connect up with people, talk kid men, family men, um, all that kind of stuff. Cool. And there's a Facebook group. Yes. Oh, yes. Ministry you, Collective, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, man, forget my I'll be. Yeah, I'll be your promoter. Like, I'll, <laughs> uh, hey, you are good at that. You are good at that. We all know. We all know. You know, Family Ministry Podcast with Nick Blevins. We got that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> See, look, I don't even yeah. have to do mine now. He he's got me covered. Yeah, it's cross promotion. There we go. But we do have the Facebook group, yes, and we're you're always welcome to come on there. We try to have good dialogue um, about different topics, and we've had some good ones uh, recently, um, and so it's been it's been a lot of fun on there. Cool, David. Well, I uh, I love being active on social media, so let's connect on Facebook, Facebook uh, at Dave Madron, and then Twitter, D Madron. Uh, then we got a fun website, davidmadron.me. Last name is M A D D R O N. And then, of course, my podcast, uh, which is available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, The World of Kid Men. Would love to have you listen. Tom's impressed that your podcast is available on 73 platforms. Um, so uh, I, the easiest way to find me is just nickblevins.com, if you can spell it correctly. There's a, I think there's like a rugby player named Nick Blevins, which we could obviously be confused for because, right, like I, yeah, I look like I Totally, can. yeah. You should have him on sometimes. Yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, but if you Google it, you could probably find anything. Inst- uh, Twitter and Facebook's the same. Uh, but Instagram is not, I did not, I was not cool enough to get my Instagram handle. So that's in, in Abel Evans. And here's a funny story about that. Years ago at the orange tour, we took a volunteer and he took a picture, was going to post it on Instagram and wanted to tag me. So he tagged at Nick Blevins. Well, meanwhile, it's like a 14 or 15 year old boy whose Twitter handle, because what it would do is it would translate it to Twitter. And so it shows up on Twitter as his Twitter handle, okay, which is not Nick Blevins because that's me. And it says, at the Orange Tour with Chris and Swag Blevins. That was that dude's Twitter handle. That's it. I was like, that is pretty funny. And I don't ever want the title or the tag Swag Blevins. So I hope people don't think that's like really. Oh, that's on, dude. That's on. Swag Blevins. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? I told him, like, John, that's not me. Apparently, it's like some high school student. You might want to, might want to change that. And if, and if you saw his Instagram profile, I, I was thinking, I don't want to be confused at all with whoever this is. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's that's years ago, though. That's a long time ago. Because nice. I'm like, who is this? Like, same last name, but you know, that is not my Twitter handle. Anyway, nice. Swag Blevins. <laughs> 
Um, I don't have like, I need a bobblehead like Jim Wyman, you know, <laughs> I don't have any, there's no swag. There's no family ministry podcast swag. Hey, I know where you can get some of those. <laughs> oh, nice. The businessman. Say that's a that's a call out to all the listeners. Like if you start start creating Nick some swag for his podcast, <laughs> for everybody. Like, see, that's what's going to happen. Somebody's going to reply. Like, and then, and then what happens is, who, how many people buy it? Nobody. Nobody cares about. <laughs> nobody cares about <laughs> swag from our podcast. Anyhow, Tom, won't you get us back on track? Okay, so the best place to find me, uh, you can go to ymsidekick.com. That's I got my podcast there. It's also on iTunes, but just go there. Um, I got a cool Twitter ebook on there as well. Um, and, um, yeah, I love, I love Twitter. So that's the best place to connect with me at T a pounder. You connect with me there. I'll definitely respond to you because I'm always on Twitter. So why I'm sidekick and at T a pounder. Cool. And I am at Steve Cullum everywhere on, on social media. So I was fortunate enough to, to get my name everywhere. So, um, pretty much I've, I've learned from some other, uh, tech pundits and things that I've, I listened to. It's like, as soon as a new platform comes out, even if you're not going to use it, go on there, save your name. Um, so unfortunately, like I have a whole bunch of different social medias that I probably don't even use, but I went on there just to save my name. So, uh, but the, I'm pretty active on, on Twitter and, and Facebook and a little bit on Instagram as well. Um, so you can look up that S T E V E C U L L U M. And my podcast is the student ministry podcast and it's the, the student ministry podcast.com. So you can uh, check that out as well. It's a monthly podcast where I interview other student ministry workers. So man, guys, it's been, it's been great to, to chat with or about orange conference with you guys today. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, Thank you. Great times. Great times. Thanks, Steve. Well, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed talking about the Orange Conference with those guys. And I think there's some common themes that you can see in there. You know, there's the relationships. Uh, there's the ideas, you know, the speakers that come and, and breakouts are on main stage and they just make you think differently and or maybe give you some practical ideas that you can apply. The relationships thing is always big for me. That's one of my favorite things about uh, the Orange Conference or really any conference that I go to. My favorite thing that I look back on is the conversations, you know, the relationships, the people that I got to meet and learn from. And, and you know, the experience and all of that is great. We didn't even talk about that as much with the Orange Conference. But as usual, it was uh, powerful, emotional, hilarious, um, just a lot of fun. It was it was it always cha- challenges me spiritually. So it has all of those elements, too. But certainly the relationships were probably the, the highlight for me. Action items coming out of this podcast I think are just what about some of the ideas you heard in there, whether it's like the married people thing that I talked about, or maybe it's you're going to take some steps for um, racial unity in your church and your city. Um, You know, the made known event that David mentioned that my friend Kenny Conley has uh, helped create that resource with orange and, and did that breakout. I mean, you could really take that, get that resource from orange and serve, people in your church and in your surrounding community really well in a way that I just think we're not doing, you know, well enough. And, and and often if people are struggling with infertility or with infant loss or miscarriages and things like that, they just don't talk about it, you know, with a lot of people. And so therefore there's tons of folks who are out there who are hurting and they don't have a, a place, you know, they don't have people to talk to and doing something like that might be the idea that you want to implement. So hopefully you listen to the different thoughts and ideas, and you're going to think about which one will help your church the most. As usual, I'd probably encourage you to just start with one, (laughs) pick one idea, and maybe chase that and implement that in your church in the coming months. So that's all I have for today. So hope it was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Family Ministry Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Nick Blevins Family Ministry Podcast. We hope this helps you maximize your church's potential. We would love to hear stories of how you apply what you've learned. You can do that by leaving a comment on iTunes or in the show notes at nickblevins.com.